Where's uh, just your emotions, first of all, after the Bournemouth game? Are you aggrieved, disappointed that you didn't get the, the win either via your own chances or decisions not going your way? Uh, yeah, I think before the game, a point would probably wouldn't have been a bad result. Um, but seeing how the game panned out, uh, probably left the game with a little bit of a bitter taste in our mouth. Um, I definitely felt we deserved the three points um, with the chances we created and obviously given the penalty shot, which we didn't get. Um, yeah, disappointed we didn't get the three points. Because clearly we've, we've just spoken to Paul Heckingbottom. He's frustrated about a, a series of decisions recently. Uh, clearly there's obviously things that you can do yourselves, but at this stage of the season you kind of need those to go your way, don't you? Yeah, uh, listen, I don't really want to criticise officials because they do a hard job. Um, it's easy to you know slow down replays and say, oh, you know, there's a foul there, and, but it's 100 mile an hour, you have a chance to make one decision, there's no VAR. Um, so it's difficult. Um, the only thing I'd say is he was in a great position to see it. Um, he couldn't have been in a better position. So it's probably one of them he should have got right, and he'll probably know that looking back on it. Um, but you know, there's loads of other teams that will have decisions go against them, and it's just you know it's part and parcel of football. And you know, like I said, if we take the big chances, then that one becomes irrelevant. So disappointing, but you know you can't just point the finger at the referees. As a player, though, would you like better communication from officials before games, after games, in general from them, so you can all kind of understand each other a little bit better about their mindset and why they do things and why they don't? Uh, possibly, possibly. Um, I think better communication between the officials themselves might actually help a bit more because clearly the linesman thought it was a penalty. Um, so. I think uh, that's probably something for them to focus on um, more than us because obviously they're the ones making the decisions and you know, we're not going to change their minds. I wanted to ask about Filip Aremovic, clearly come in last couple of games, seems to be a really big character on the pitch, is, is that the same off the pitch? Uh, yeah, yeah, big character, um, he comes out with some random shouts before the game and stuff which <laughs> the boys chuckle at, um, but I think you can see straight away he's, he's got that passion, he's got that drive, um, you know, he's hard as nails, you can see it in the tackles. Um, I think it's a great fit for us and you know it shows that you know he's coming to the side and we've got two clean sheets in his two performances and you know, I think he's done really really well to come in and deliver those kind of performances um, as a new player. I know he's a, an international player, I know he's been playing top flight football for a number of years but how impressed have you been at just how seamlessly it appears that he's, he's come in, not had too much time with the squad and just, just fitted into what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the telltale signs of a you know very very good footballer. Um, you know, he's confident in his own game. Um, you can see he's a mature professional, um, understands football, understands his role in the team, and even in the sessions leading up to the games, you know, there's obviously different tactics and different things that the manager wants him to do in his role, and you know, he's taken that on board and um, performed admirably. And without people like Chris Basham and, and Billy Sharp, you kind of need everyone else to, to step up and fill their, their leadership role and, and that kind of driving force within the team. And, and he, as well as other players, seems to have really done that. Yeah, I think that, you know, the team that starts the season is really the team that finishes the season. Um, football's a squad game and there's going to be times when you're out of it and there's times when you're in. Um, I think over the course of the season, your job is to, you know, understand your role when you come in, understand the responsibilities of what you're supposed to bring to the team. And I think to a man, um, we've done that really, really well this season. Yeah, because with, with up to 11 first team players out at various times over the last few months, the squad has had to step up, hasn't it? How, how much credit does the whole squad deserve for getting Sheffield United into the position you're in right now in the top six? Massive credit. Um, you can see other clubs have injuries and, you know, form and performances will drop off. Um, but I think we've managed to maintain that given you know, the number of injuries we've incurred this season and you know, like I say that comes from understanding your role, um, the management making it clear to everyone um, what your job is when you come into the side and then it's down to the players themselves to deliver when they get the opportunity and you know, like I say to a man we've, we've done that really well. It's now 16 clean sheets in 27 games for yourself. Clearly, it's not just you that keeps those clean sheets. Uh, what what has enabled the team, in your opinion, to have such a good record from that perspective? Um, a desire to keep the ball out of the net as a team. Um, the way the manager sets us up to play. Um, you know, we're built off a real solid foundation, um, and you know, we've had. I've lost count of the number of different back lines we've had this season. Um, but anyone that's come in has done a similar job. So, yeah, it's you know it's a team effort. It's not just myself and the 
the back lads as well. Um, it's the boys at the front that are setting off the press from the front. Um, the small details that help keep a clean sheet, and you know we've done well. It's well, sorry to you know wrap them up over the course of the season. Huge credit then to the staff, really, for getting a, a way of defending. You know, whether you're in possession, out possession. You know, different opponents that different people have been able to come in and slot in, and obviously, you know, perform the, the roles that they've wanted for the team. Yeah, um, like I say, the way we defend is is, is clear, and the managers made sure it's clear. Um, you know, there's a lot of detail that goes into that on the training pitch and. It's down to the boys that are, you know, maybe out of the side to understand, look at the boys that are in the team and, and, and say, OK, well, if I step in, what's my role going to be? Um, what am I going to do to contribute? And I think if you ask those questions of yourself um, when you come onto the pitch, um, it's easier to perform and, and, and uh, keep, the, keep the defensive unit as, as constant as possible. And those boys that have come in um, out of the cold have done fantastically well. It certainly feels like you've taken your chance since since finally getting a, a, your spot in the, the first team. What's your mindset kind of been like? What was it like before while you were waiting to get your chance and how's that changed to how you are now? Um, yeah, I've pretty much my career I've been used to playing. You know, I had a spell at Rangers where I was on the bench. Um, didn't like it. I had a spell here last season where I was on the bench. I'm not going to lie, I didn't like it. Um, but I'm a, prof a professional. Um, I'm always trying to improve, trying to show the, the management team what I can do. Um, I've always been confident in my own ability and, and know that all I need is a chance and, and I'll make sure that I take it. Fortunately, that came this season and I think it's a uh, testament to the team itself that you know I was able to come in and hit the ground running because the team was had a way of playing, the team was solid. Um, and yeah, the back ledge helped me a lot and like I said, I got off to a decent start and you know, I've kept that going. Were you always confident that you would finally get your chance? Clearly, with the likes of Aaron and Robin coming in, you know, big keepers and big personalities, yeah. was there a point at which you thought, you know, I might, I might not get my chance here? Um, that never crossed my mind until the start of the season. Possibly, funnily, funnily enough, but um, it was a different dynamic last season. It was in the Premier League, like you say, Ramos was here. Um, you know, we've been relegated. He's left. Um, Robin's come in, and then you know, you're thinking, okay, well. Am I going to get a chance here? Um, but all you can do is, you know, work as hard as you can, try and impress the staff, and and you know I try to do that day in day out. And you know, football's a funny game; injuries, loss of form can happen at any moment. And you know, especially when you're on the bench, you might only get one chance to show you know, what you can do before the next lad's back in. So you need to make sure you're ready. And how's Adam Davis been for for you and your relationship since he arrived? Because he's clearly now in the the position that that you were. Yeah, no, he's been fantastic. Um, you know, he's brought a lot of energy, enthusiasm uh, to the group on a day to day training basis, and a lot of quality as well. Um, he's an international goalkeeper, um, very very established at championship level. Um, so yeah, you know, he's he's doing his job. Um, I'm sure you know he'll be itching for an opportunity. Um, but that's the way football works. Um, there's always someone that wants to take your shirt and you, know, you need to make sure that you're on top of your game um, so that doesn't happen. But that is where the goalkeeping department is a little bit different to others, isn't it? Because there's one spot w within yeah. the team and it's, it must be a, a unique relationship really as, as a goalkeeping unit and you've seen both sides of it here at, at the club. Yeah, it is. I think uh, every goalkeeper understands the position, understands the role. Um, so you know, it's a lonely position. And we all know that, so we try and stick together. You know, you train away from the team for a part of the session, so you build up that bond together. But you know, at the back of your mind, we all know that we're in competition with each other. We know that only one of us can play. Um, but having someone with good quality behind you, um, working day in day out, can only sort of boost your own performances, make sure that you're on your toes, and obviously help the club as a whole. And from where the club was when Paul Eckingbottom took over before Christmas, how are you feeling right now about where the club's at and, and your chances of promotion? Um, the club's in a great place. Um, I think we've done tremendously well to get back to sort of a position where we can potentially be promoted. Um, we got off to a really slow start and had a lot of ground to make up, um, like I say, which we've done well to do. And yeah, now we're in a fantastic position. It's just a case of you know getting over that finish line, making sure we secure a playoff place, and then from there, and you know, there's obviously the chance of promotion, which we'll be pushing for. And it's now in your hands. How significant is that? Yeah, it's massive. Um, you always want to be in control of your own fate. Um, 
it's probably the ideal position to be in. Uh, you know that if you take care of your own job, it's, uh, it's irrelevant what anyone else around you does. So that's all we can focus on at the moment is our own job. And like I say, take care of that and, and everything else is irrelevant. And looking specifically at your time at Glasgow Rangers, will that kind of the expectations there, I imagine, are, are off the scale compared to a lot of football clubs. Will, will that help in situations like this where you're striving with Sheffield United to get promoted to the Premier League? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's, you know, like you say, it's a, it's a difficult club to play for, a great club to play for, but a difficult one to play for. Very unforgiving fan base, um, as great as they are. Um, you need to be an 8 out of 10 every week. Um, they need to perform in them pressure environments and football is obviously a technical game but a lot of it's mental as well so to be able to be calm in, in not so calm situations is, is a great place to be. Do you feel like after the experience of, of playing up there that you won't be phased really by anything that you're thrown into now? Um, listen everyone gets a little bit nervous here and there but it's, it's whether or not it affects your performance I think there's a, um, a fine line between nervousness and, and, and you know being ready to perform at the highest level um, we know there's some big games coming up and you know if we do make the playoffs there's going to be a pressure environment and you're going to, going to need to be able to handle that well in order to be at the optimal performance level and it's just part of football it's something you look forward to and how are you feeling about the prospect of another playoff campaign I know you've been in a few I know you're involved in a big game against Sheffield United a number yeah. of years ago that ended up five all as well five, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, was a, it was a fascinating game but it is is the playoff something we spoke to Paul Hackingbottom earlier and he spoke about how it had been a real positive for the game of football it had been introduced is it a kind of format that having experienced it you know as a player you look forward to and you can kind of get really excited about yeah, I mean, if you finish third by a point and the team that finishes 15 points behind you beats you in the player final, you're probably raging a little bit. But it's fantastic. Everyone enjoys watching it. Um, it brings excitement um, to the game. And there'll be countless, countless footballers across the country that will have great memories um, of being in the playoffs and winning and going up. And even the disappointments, um, you know, they're still memories. Um, that you wouldn't have got if there was no playoffs. So it's it's one of those. It's an opportunity to um, have a day out of Wembley and get yourself promoted. Is that game against uh, with Swindon and Sheffield United something you talked about with Chris Basham at all? Because I know he was he was playing in that yeah. game as well. He scored, didn't he? I have to say that as well. I think looking back, um, yeah, we had, it was on in the gym a few weeks back. Uh, so I was uh, watching it before training. Uh, crazy game, crazy game. I said to him even at one point, I, di I didn't know what the score was. Um, all I know is if we conceded again, then we were out. So it was one of those crazy games. To concede five and still win the game, um, yeah, crazy. And just finally, Reading up next, um, is it better to be playing a team at this year that, that has something on their season rather than some in mid-table, or does it matter? Um, I don't think it matters, to be honest. Um, there's no side that comes out there you know, trying to just not win the game of football or not do well in the game. So, you know, regardless of where you are in, in the league, um, everyone's out there trying to do their best. Um, so, yeah, we know what we need to do. And like I say, just take care of our own job.